Resident Evil Village is finally in the rearview mirror, and things are looking exceptionally bright for the future of the franchise. In the beginning of the game, we are introduced to new parents, Ethan and Mia Winters, with their little baby, Rose. Now, with Mother's Day coming up soon, we would like to count down our favourite mo- One moment, please. Yeah? I'm recording right now. Sorry, I've been handed a note. Uh, it says, We can't make a Mother's Day video because the whole world can't agree on a single date. Well, that's not good to me. Fine. Now, with it being Father's Day, we would like to count down our favourite dads in the series. I'm Steve for First Aid Spray, and this is the Top 5 Resident Evil Dads. Daddy. Jack Baker. I'm going to be honest here. There are a lot of horrible fathers in this series. Whether it's Wesker leaving Jake with some serious issues, or the way that William neglects Sherry when he shouldn't, and then doesn't when he really should. The lesser of the evils has to go to Jack. When we first meet the Baker family, they are very much twisted by the mould. But let's set the Wayback Machine to three years prior. For the most part at this point, Jack is a pretty decent person, and you get the real idea of the warmer side of his personality. He and Marguerite are a hashtag goals old married couple. However, things do seem to turn quite dark after he's been drinking, going as far as to beat Lucas. With a little therapy, he could have gone a long way, since he clearly loves his family. But all things considered, he honestly only makes it onto the list due to there being a very short list of good fathers. I thought you'd just slip out before dinner was done. Yes! Ah! President Graham. President Graham had to deal with a lot after his predecessor resigned following the fallout of the Raccoon City incident. To add to that stress, his daughter Ashley was kidnapped by the Los Illuminados. So, who better to send than the good friend of Art Thompson himself, Leon S. Kennedy. Sending his best agent and an actual friend just shows how much he's willing to give for his daughter and moreover, we have it on pretty good authority that he was a great president. After all, the kidnapping of your children by an evil cult would probably send most people into hiding when all is said and done. But Graham served two terms as a US president and we hope to see more interactions with the Graham family in the upcoming Infinite Darkness series. William Birkin Now I know what you're thinking. William? Really? He just said he was bad a few minutes ago. Well, hear me out. With William's transformation, he can sure keep an eye on Sherry. You gotta be kidding me. Don't look at me like that. This is a dad list. Of course there's going to be dad jokes. Also, I don't write the script. I just read it. Mostly. Robert Kendo. One of the more tragic entries on the list. In the RE2 and RE3 remake timeline of events, we get a stark look at how Robert lost everything during the Raccoon City incident. Shortly after reports of the dead walking the streets, did the gun shop owner lock his doors and hunker down with his family? No. Gun shop Kendo sure doesn't appear to be looted, so we can only assume that this good man gave away nearly his entire stock to passers-by to protect as many people as possible. As the Kendo family were having a pint and waiting for this whole thing to blow over, however, tragedy befell the family when his wife and daughter became infected with the virus. The poor guy has to mercifully end both of them, and his fate is left rather ambiguous. But this is Raccoon City, so you can rest assured that he didn't have a happy ending. You did everything you could to protect your family, sire, and for that, we salute you. Just go. Just give us some privacy. Barry Burton. We all know he had to be here, given he holds the title for best dad jokes in the entire franchise. But he surely has had some high and low moments as a father. Barry not only enters the series as a sort of father figure to the other characters, but as one of the few members of the Resi cast already with a significant other and children. When we first meet him, he turns out to be assisting Wesker in his twisted plans due to blackmail, with Albert using Barry's family as leverage. Eventually, he fights back against Sunglasses Man and escapes the Spencer Mansion with the remaining Stars members. Soon after, he moves his family to Canada to keep them safe. However, years later, in the Burton home, an accident between his daughters Moira and Polly and an unlocked gun cabinet puts a strain on the relationship between Barry and his eldest daughter Moira. 
Following these events, in 2011, Moira is abducted during the events of Resident Evil Revelations 2, and Daddy comes to the rescue. Not only is their relationship a big part of the story, Barry also finds himself adopting a new daughter, Alex we I mean Natalia Corda. As far as we know, he is still living in Canada with his family and they are as close as they have ever been. However, we hopefully will see what the crazy Burtonses are up to in the future, but for now, we hope Barry is at least still the master of dad jokes. So, what are you going to do now, Barry? I'm going to go back to being a father. Ethan Winters. Welcome. Wait, someone quick, roll that VT again. It should be no surprise that Ethan made his way to the top of this list. When we first met the Faceless Wonder, most fans had a very neutral reaction to him. He was about as entertaining as a fence post. Capcom took this to heart for Village and developed his personality to the point where he absolutely soared. Thinking his wife was murdered and daughter kidnapped by his mentor, Chris Redfield, he trudged into the titular village to find little baby Rosemary. To get his daughter, he goes through all manner of hell, losing his fingers, an entire hand, which he reattaches with magic apple juice, and even literally having his heart ripped out by Mother Miranda. Waking up later, and with the help of Duke, who is an entirely different kind of daddy, Ethan resolutely resumes his mission of rescuing Rose, and after putting a stop to Miranda, finally gets to hold little Rose in his arms again. All he has been through has taken its toll on his body, however. Knowing he won't live much longer, he makes the very painful decision to pass Rose over to Chris, giving the ultimate sacrifice any parent could do to protect their child. You have come a long way from your origins, Ethan, and earned a very special place in our hearts. Go into that sweet good night, you amazing prince. You've more than earned your rest. And now an honorable mention. Last, but certainly not least, we must mention all of the fathers in the RE fandom. From the very beginning of the franchise, when you would help us through the scarier parts of the games, which in hindsight, probably not the best games you could be buying for your children, but you are the reason a lot of us are here enjoying the games today. And here's to those of us now becoming fathers ourselves, who are now, or will one day, share the love of the series to your kids. This time, maybe wait until they're a little older because yeah, things are a little bit more realistic than they were 25 years ago. And those are our favourite dads in the Resident Evil franchise. Do you agree with our choices? Is there anyone else you would rather have put in this list instead? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. My name is Steve and happy Father's Day, survivors!